Hi, Tom here with some more ATPL tips. When I was preparing this basic series on GNAB, I don't think I quite expected there to be so much to say about convergency. So as I'm sat here editing the video now, I've decided that I need to split this up into two. So this first video is gonna look at the real basics of convergency and then take um, earth convergency and do some uh, exam questions about that. And the next video is gonna look at convergency between run lines and great circles and conversion angles and do some questions on those as well. Also, I'm proud to say that Aviation Exam are now sponsoring my channel, so go and check them out. In the meantime, back to Convergency, let's go. Okay, let's start with a really simple definition. If two things are said to be converging, what it means is that they're on a path to meet. So in terms of GNAV, convergency is all to do with the rate at which things are meeting. And that could be convergency between two positions on Earth. We call that Earth convergency. It could also be the difference in angle between a run line track and a great circle track. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, it could also be a third form of convergency um, known as chart convergency. Not really going to look at chart convergency in this video. We're going to focus instead on earth convergency and we're going to focus on convergency between run lines and great circles and the conversion angle between those two. By the way, when we're talking about the convergency between two positions, really we're only talking about the longitude because remember, lines of latitude don't meet, whereas lines of longitude do meet, they meet at the poles. Now you've probably established there'll be a formula for convergency, uh, which we'll take a look at. And the first part of the formula is this. Convergency equals a change in longitude. Now we're gonna do more to it than just look at the change in longitude. And it makes sense that if we're interested in the rate at which longitudes are converging, that uh, we would be interested in what the change in longitude between those positions is. If you take a look at this map of the North Pole and we pick on, say, the 45 degree East Meridian and the 60 degree West Meridian, then at the North Pole we can see that the convergency between these two meridians is just the combined angle that's made between them. So in this case it would be 105 degrees. But you can't just measure the change in longitude between two positions. That would be far too easy because have a look at this projection of the Earth. Now you may have heard me say in previous videos that there are actually quite a few things wrong with this type of chart projection of the Earth. However, one thing that it does get right is it shows at the equator that lines of longitude are in fact parallel to each other. Now, if lines are parallel to each other, they're not converging. So we can say that convergency is maximum at the poles and non-existent because the lines are parallel at the equator. Let me show you that on a pseudo three-dimensional globe. Here's the Earth. If we take away the countries and just leave ourselves the lines of latitude and longitude and highlight the equator, and let's draw on the 60 degree west and the 45 degree east meridian. We know that at the equator they're parallel and we know that at the North Pole and also the South Pole, but we can see here the North Pole, that um, the convergency between them is 105 degrees, i.e. the angle that's made between them. Let's get rid of these two and let's pick on the 15 degree west and 15 degree east meridians. Well, what does it mean to be 15 degrees west or 15 degrees east? Well, what it means is that the angle made between the Greenwich meridian, the zero degree meridian, and 15 degrees west, the angle between those two meridians at the pole is 15 degrees. And the same is true of the 15 degree east meridian. So the total convergency between the 15 degree west and the 15 degree east meridian at the pole is 30 degrees but at the equator, the meridians are parallel, so there is zero convergency between them. So if convergency is maximum at the pole and minimum at the equator, then it means that basically anywhere 
else along those lines of longitude, convergency will be something in between. And that kind of makes sense. In fact, it's probably really obvious, but it is a really key point to grab really early on, which is that convergency at the poles is maximum and at the equator is minimum. So we need to add into the convergency formula something that will uh, take into account the difference in latitude uh, in order to give us a different convergency as our latitude changes. And so we include the sign of our latitude. Now, trig functions always return an answer between 0 and 1. And the function that will correspond and play nicely for our um, convergency formula here is sine. Now, if you've watched the departure video, you will have seen me explain why it is that we use cosine uh, within the departure formula. Um, Go back and watch that if you haven't seen it already. I'm going to be a bit quicker going through the sine principle for convergency. It's effectively the same reasoning. And notice how similar the convergency formula is to the departure formula. Both formulas rely upon a change in longitude, but convergency keeps the answer in degrees, whereas departure wants the answer in nautical miles. And that's why departure has got the times 60 in there. And the departure formula uses cosine, while the convergency formula uses sine. Let's take a look at why that is. Now, we can form a series of right angle triangles which connect the equator, the angle made with the centre of the Earth and our position's latitude, and the position on the Earth's surface. Remember that the sine of our angle is equal to the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. In our case, the hypotenuse is the radius of the Earth, and by the way, the maths in these GNAV questions assume that the world is a perfect sphere. It isn't. But for the sake of the mathematics within these exam questions, yes, it is. And this model is called a geocentric model. The more accurate model, based on the slightly squashed um, Earth, is called a geodetic, also known as a geographic model. And that's the model that gets used on charts and navigation computers and that kind of thing. Uh, you've heard me say already, you do need to be able to answer questions about a geodetic geographic model and you need to be able to answer questions about a geocentric model. But it's important to understand that this is based on geocentric, whereas the real world is not. At low latitudes, i.e. close to the equator, the length of the opposite side of our triangle is relatively small. So opposite over hypotenuse will give us a relatively small number. As our latitude increases, the length of the opposite side of our triangle will increase until eventually at the pole, the opposite side is the same length as the radius of the Earth. And so we use the sine function. And if you plug these numbers into your calculator, you can see that sine zero gives us zero, sine 90 gives us one, and in between we get numbers ranging between zero and one. So we can go back now to the convergency formula and hopefully it makes sense as to why we use the sine function within this formula. And if it makes sense, then it hopefully won't be too difficult to remember. I want to get you to a point where you don't just remember the formula because it's another thing to remember, but if you can understand it, then you don't need to remember anything because worst case scenario, you remember how to figure out what the formula will be. Okay. One other thing to say is that with departure, we tended to look at positions at similar positions of latitude. With convergency, actually, we can work out the convergency between positions of quite varied uh, latitude. And so actually what we do is we can make a slight tweak to this formula here. We can say that convergency is equal to the change in longitude times the sine of our average latitude or our mean latitude latitude. So one of the first things that you might have to do when approaching an exam question is work out the average latitude between these two positions. Okay, let's do some exam questions. Okay, so this question says, given these two positions, what is the earth convergency between them? Okay, really fairly straightforward. We know that the uh, convergency formula 
is a change in longitude times the sine of our mean latitude. In this case, both positions happen to be at the same latitude, so that's fine, and we just plug it in. So let's draw a little picture. You'll know by now that I like to draw sketches just so that I make sure I know exactly what's going on. We've got a position in the west and a position in the east. So there's the zero degree meridian. Position A is 10 degrees, 25 minutes west. Uh, A, 10 degrees, 25 minutes west. Position B is 5 degrees, 20 minutes east. Now, the reason that drawing a picture is a very good idea is because you need to work out whether you're adding these two positions together or subtracting one from the other. You can see from this picture, the change in longitude is the distance from A to the Greenwich Meridian plus the distance from the Greenwich Meridian to B. But if both of these had been in the uh, west or both of them had been in the east, then actually we'd be subtracting one from the other to find the total change in longitude. Draw a picture, it always makes things clearer. And, and I think you've always got time in exams to do this. Um, if it takes you an extra three or four seconds to answer a question right the first time, that's way better than rushing the question and getting it wrong, then going back to it and having to do it two or three times. Take an extra couple of seconds, be more thorough, get it right first time. And yeah, that's the way that I would go about doing it. Um, anyway, okay, so uh, what is our change in longitude between these two positions? Uh, let's add them together. So 10 degrees, 25 minutes plus five degrees, 20 minutes gives us a total change in longitude of 15 degrees and 45 minutes. By the way, if you haven't yet uh, found the DMS, degrees, minutes, second button on your calculator, go back and watch the first video in this series where we do a little bit of maths with that and I introduced that. It makes life a lot easier. So going to our departure formula now, we can say that our change in longitude is 15 degrees 45 minutes. And we can multiply that by the sine of our latitude, which is 25 degrees and 15 minutes. Really simple. So uh, you can just use the answer times uh, sine 25 degrees 15 minutes equals. Now here's the interesting thing about the DMS button on your calculator. If you start to use it, then all of the output maths, all of the output answers that you'll get will also be in the DMS format. But, um, and you probably know this already, you can switch backwards and forwards between the DMS and um, base 10. DMS is using a base 60 version of maths. You can go back to the more conventional looking base 10 just by pressing the DMS button. So it, it gives us six degrees, 43 minutes and 6.45 seconds. Press the DMS button and you get 6.7185, I'm gonna call that. Now, if you look at the answers that are available to us, is it 6.72? Yes. Is it any of the others? No. So I'm going with A, 6.72. Good. Okay, let's do another Earth Convergency question. This one says, what is the Earth Convergency between position A, 65 degrees 30 minutes north, 100 degrees 25 minutes west, and position B, 65 degrees 30 minutes north, 125 degrees 25 minutes west? Okay, uh, simple enough again, always start by drawing a picture. So position A, 100 degrees 25 minutes west, Let's use the Greenwich Meridian over here. Position A, 100 degrees, 25 minutes west. And position B, well, it's actually even further west. It's 125 degrees, 25 minutes. Now, this kind of illustrates what I was saying uh, within that first question. 100 degrees, 25 for position A is talking about the difference between 
the longitude of our position and the Greenwich meridian. And the same is true for position B with the 125 degree 25 minutes to the west. All we want though is the difference between these two positions. So really simply, and I hope this already makes sense to you, to get the change in longitude between these two positions, we just subtract A from B. So, uh, I mean, you can probably do this without using a calculator. It's going to be 25 degrees, isn't it? But always use a calculator anyway. Don't be that guy that fails an exam because you rushed and assumed you knew what you were doing. The calculator is there, it's allowed in the exams, use it. 125 degrees 25 minutes minus 100 degrees 25 minutes gives us 25 degrees, good. So our change in longitude in this position is going to be 25 degrees. We're gonna multiply that by the sine of our latitude, which is 65 degrees and 30 minutes. And the answer that we come out with is 22 degrees, 44 minutes, 56.51 seconds. Now the answers that are on the board are in degrees. Um, they're in decimalized degrees. Only one of them actually has a 22 at the front, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be option B, but let's press the DMS button on our calculator just to check. 22.749 something or other, that's basically uh, the same as answer B that's given to us, 22.75. Cool. If you want that question in the banks, then you can find that one on ATPL questions. It's question number 614357. Okay, that's Earth convergency. Let's move on to look at uh, the second type of convergency, which is convergency between Rumline and Great Circle tracks. Okay, I'm going to stop this first video on convergency here. Move on to the next video if you want to see part two on convergency. If you found this video helpful, then uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. It really does mean a lot to me to see the channel grow. Also, big shout out to Aviation Exam who are now sponsoring my videos. And I'll see you next time with some more ATPL tips.